In this video, we're going to go over Beer Lambert or Beer's Law. We're going to first start off with an experiment and then we're going to go over the equation, some example problems, and then lastly, we're going to end so with some error analysis. So, like, the way that the experiment works is that you have a light source shining some light, which then goes through a prism, and the prism just separates the light out into different colors and different wavelengths, and then only a, a, a light of a specific wavelength is allowed to go through. That then passes through a vial containing a solution of a specific concentration and then so as, as the light goes through some of the light's going to get absorbed and then the rest of the light's going to travel through then it hits the machine and this machine measure measures the absorbance of the light so it compares how much light went through versus how, how much you started with over here to get the absorbance the equation associated with beer's law is a equals ELC, or sometimes you might also see as capital A equals lowercase a, lowercase b, capital C. So A is absorbance, and that has no units. E is the molar absorptivity constant, and the units for that is 1 divided by molarity times centimeter. This is specific to solution, so you can actually use the E value to identify the, ident well, to identify the solution. L is the path length, that's just how long your vial is. It's the, the path that the light travel the, the length that the light travels through the solution. And unless that's given, usually it's one centimeter, because most files you use will be one centimeter. And then lastly, C is the concentration of the solution. And the units for that will be molarity. So from this equation, you can see a couple of relationships. We can see that as the as the path length increases, that's going to cause the absorbance to increase and then as the concentration as the molarity increases that's also going to cause the absorbance to increase just because if this vial was longer then the light will travel through it longer and so, so it can be absorbed more and then also if the solution is more concentrated if there are more solutes in there then there are just more particles that can absorb the light so as the path length increases and the molarity increases more of the light will be absorbed. So these factors are directly proportional. Now let's take a look at the most common example problems or the most common problems you'll see related to Beer's Law. One common problem is selecting the appropriate light to use in the absorbance experiment, in this experiment. We said earlier that the prism will separate the light into a lot of di into different colors and then we're just gonna be selecting one wavelength to use in this experiment. So let's say that we are given a absorbance versus wavelength graph like this, and we have to select the, the light to use in the experiment. You always want to select the wavelength the, that has the highest absorbance. So you're just going to look at the peak and find, look at the graph and find the highest peak over here, and then just trace that down. And then that's the wavelength of light that you want to be using in this experiment. So you can maximize the absorbance and minimize the concentration. Here's another common problem type. A chemist is analyzing the concentration of a color compound X in a solution. The chemist prepares a series of solutions of compound X and measures their absorbance at a particular wavelength. The data is shown below. And then we're given the table of concentration versus absorbance. You can see that as the concentration increases, the absorbance increases as well. And that's what we expect because we said that absorbance and concentration are directly proportional. Question one is asking us to calculate the molar absorptivity, E, of the compound at this given wa wavelength. Well, we just have to use this equation. It equals ELC. We're starting for E, so we're going to want to isolate that, and then we're just going to divide both sides by L and C. So that means that E is going to equal absorbance divided by the path length times the concentration. And we can use any of these, these trials because the molar absorptivity should be theoretically the same. There's going to be a little bit of a difference because of the experimental uh, errors, but then the value should be close enough. So let's say we're we're going to use this first trial. So the absorbance is 0 0.120. The path length, it doesn't give it to us. So we're just going to go with the default path length of one centimeter. And then the concentration is 0 0.001 molar. Plug that into the calculator, and you get 120 centimeters to negative 1, 
and meters to negative one just means that that's just one over centimeter one over meter because the centimeters and meter didn't cancel out so that's uh, that's part one number two determine the absorbance of a solution with a specific concentration of 0 0.06 so we have this time we're solving for a uh, now we have e because e is going to be the same since we're keeping the wavelength the same so we can just use the equation a equals e 0 0.120 per centimeters times molarity the path length was one centimeter and then the molarity is given to us as 0 0.006 molar sorry this is supposed to be 120 instead of 0 0.120 and that's 0 0.720 Absorbance has no units. So that's the answer for number two. Number three, calculate the concentration of the solution that has absorbance of 0 0.04. So let's, let's erase this. We're going to keep the molar absorptivity there. Number three, this time we're solving for concentration. So we're solving for C. We're going to divide both sides by E and L. So C is equal to absorbance divided by the molar absorptivity times the path length. And absorbance here is 0.4. The molar absorptivity, that was 120, and the path length, that's just one centimeter. So this is going to be 0.4 divided by 120, and that equals 0 .003, 0 0.0033, repeating, and the units for that will be molarity because we're solving for a concentration. And then lastly, and then number four, if the chemist accidentally dilutes the solution of compound X by factor two, how would this affect the absorbance, assuming the molar absorptivity and the path length remains the same? So we're assuming that E remains the same and L remains the same. That means A is going to be directly proportional to C. And we're decreasing the concentration by factor two because we're diluting it. So since we're, we're, we're halving the concentration, then we expect that the absorbance will be halved as well. So absorbance will decrease by a factor of two or it'll be halved. So for these type of questions where you're given the the molarity, the absorbance and and or the molar absorptivity, you just use this equation A equals E L C. Typically L is just going to be one unless you're given another path length. Lastly we're going to go over how these following factors will affect the absorbance, whether it's going to cause the absorbance to go up, to go down, or is it going to be unchanged? So first, the vial was cleaned with distilled water only prior to the addition of the solution. So if the vial was, usually what you want to do is you want to clean the vial with distilled solution and then splash some of the solution in it, rinse it off, and then add the, re-add the solution to there. The reason why is that maintains the concentration of the solution. If the vial was just clean with distilled water, there might still have been some, a little bit of distilled water there prior to the addition of the solution. And that extra water is going to cause the concentration to go down. If the, because, and if the concentration goes down, then the absorbance will also go down because concentration and absorbance are directly proportional. Second, some solution was spilled out. So let's say that when you were transferring the solution to the vial, accidentally some of it spilled out. How is that going to affect the absorbance? Well, that's actually not going to affect the absorbance at all because the concentration of the solution is still going to be the same. Remember, concentration is the ratio of solutes relative to solvents. So let's say that like, you just you spilled the section out, you're going, to, you're going to have the same ratio of solute to solvent in the remaining solution. So the concentration stays the same, the absorbance is going to stay the same. Next, the solution was left out exposed overnight prior to the experiment. So if this this was prepared the night before and it was left out, then some of the water is going to evaporate. So you're going to get less water, you're going to get less solvent, and you're going to have the same amount of solute. That's going to cause the concentration to go up. Because remember, concentration or molarity is going to equal the moles of the solute divided by the liters of the solution. So if you're decreasing the liters of the solution, that's going to increase the concentration. A higher concentration is going to lead to a higher absorbance, so that's going to increase the absorbance. Next, the vial contains the fingerprints or scratch mark. So if the vial is not completely clean, if the glass part is not, if there's some blockage there, that's going to cause more, of, that's going to prevent um, more of the light from going through. And then that's going to register as a higher absorbance. Because remember, the machine is just measuring how much light gets through. 
So if you have something here, like a sticker or something that's blocking some light from going through, you have less light coming through, that's going to register as a higher absorbance. And then lastly, use the vi a wider vial. So if you use a wider vial, that's going to affect the path length. And so as the path length increases, the absorbance will also increase. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.